we're here with Guillermo del Toro at San Diego Comic Con for Crimson Peak, which people are going to start seeing footage tomorrow, maybe? Yes, yes. That's very exciting. We have about four minutes of footage, and I think uh, <laughs> I've been finishing the movie for the last six months. I mean, I, I do this, I redo that, but finally, in about uh, two, three weeks, uh, we'll finish the film. Are you fiddling or are you fixing? Yeah, I'm fiddling. I mean, we had a couple of screenings that were uh, screenings of a radically different cut. It was 20 minutes longer. I was not happy with, and uh, little by little, over the course of about six months, uh, it's it's. I've been fiddling with the color, with the. I've, been, I've mixed the movie three times, complete mixes, and I think uh, it's finally in the shape I love it. You know, it's one of my favorite three films I've done. And now I'm ready for the world to see it, yeah. Favorite three films you've done? Yeah, oh, yeah. to be part of that trilogy? The... Yeah, no, yeah, it, it's, it, I don't know if it belongs completely, but it has a lot of echoes with Devil's Backbone, for example, and visually it's very close to Pan. I think Crimson is the most carefully designed movie I've done, and, uh, but, but it's very different. It has fairy tale overtones in some instances, but it's a gothic romance. Yeah, it's um, it's sexy. This is your yeah. first really sexual film. Yeah. What was that like making that? Well, it was it was uh, strange. My my daughter asked me questions about how you're gonna shoot that. I go, I don't know. <laughs> your daughter? <laughs> uh, asked yeah, you yeah. That? I was like, Dad, <laughs> Dad, how are you gonna shoot that? I go, oh. you know. But but it's it's um, it's really uh, the a movie that is very traditionally gothic romance, but has two or three violent moments that are very violent, and uh, one or two little sexual things that are more overt than gothic romance normally is. Little sexual things? A little, it's not fully, oh, okay. it's not, uh, no. Because on know. set you said it was like kinky. It's, oh, it's kinky, <laughs> it's kinky, but it's not necessarily explicit. Okay, cool. Well, a lot of fans of your work have been waiting so long for you to do this genre, especially yes. I love fans like me. Why did it take you so long to explore gothic romance? Well, I think that there is a part of it that, that I find very attractive, and it took me a while to at least put it in the terms I wanted, which is, is, is um, the gender in, uh, in, in, in gothic romance is normally is a desperate heroine that has to be pure, with a dark brooding character, a man that is, ends up being innocent of the charges that he was uh, accused of. And I wanted to have a more proactive, really strong central female character. And I wanted a guy that not necessarily is innocent of the things that he was uh, thought of having done. And, and that took a while. It took, uh, I mean, I've been fiddling with the movie for the last eight years. So that, that, that took a while solving. And then you built, on set, a three three story? Uh, three and a half, yeah. Three and a half story home. It's yes. not fake, the walls don't come out, it's a whole house. How did you convince them to let you do that? Yeah. And what was it like when you finally got into it? Well, we, we had the discussion, Legendary loved the screenplay, and they said, we want to do it, but uh, this is one budget if it's PG-13 and a bigger budget, uh, a bigger budget if it's PG-13, and, and this is the budget if it's R. And I wanted the luxurious uh, part of the movie, but I wanted the R. So it was tiptoeing in, into the balancing that it stayed an R, but it was luxurious enough to, to, to be a, an old-fashioned production. Like, it feels like a throwback to the big productions of Hollywood in a way. Well, it has like the, the oh, what's it called? Like the sepia tone cinemascopy kind yeah, of, yeah. like the filtery feel, yeah. right? Which is yeah. intentional. It's a, it's a movie that uh, the American part is all in golds and tobaccos. So it has a beautiful, rich, uh, noble type of color palette. And then uh, it goes to almost Technicolor, Mario Baba, Hammer films uh, into the old world, into the, the, the house of Allerdale Hall, AKA Crimson Peak. And, and so do one thing that I was, I've been most impressed, and I can't wait for people to see it, is what you're talking about is also reflected in the costumes yes. and how the characters, their arc. Could you like talk a little bit about how the costumes change over the period of the movie and the 
what they're channeling, the insect, the insect yeah. that they're kind of channeling? Yeah, I mean, the thing, the thing with the movie is, I always say the difference between eye protein and eye candy is eye protein gives you part of the story. And Crimson Peak, we designed every color to be part of the storyteller. Every stitch in the wardrobe is deliberately planned. We imported uh, a lace that was created in the 1800s for real. And everything about the movie is telling you something. We build the furniture in two sizes so that when the character is weak, it would look uh, smaller in a bigger piece of furniture. And the same furniture is smaller so the character looks stronger in another scene. Uh, props. We build the entire house, and everything has hidden a theme that is in the movie that is butterflies versus moths. And the idea is one of the characters feels that she is a moth, that is a carnivorous night, night insect, and the other one is seen as a butterfly that should be cute and cuddly and colorful. And it's part of the... the I wanted very much to show two sides of uh, femininity, you know, and, and have them sort of confront each other. And are we going to see someone rip the wings off the butterfly or moth? <laughs> uh, no, not quite. But uh, <laughs> you do see some butterfly killing, yes. So there's some butterfly gore, actually, in the movie. Yeah. And you're working with uh, Doug Jones and the... Uh, Javier. The Javier. What was it like to have both of them together on set? Well, uh, I think that I've never looked fatter than when they were in because Doug Jones and Javier are the two thinnest men on earth. And it was like a, 110 one was Doug, one was Javier, and I was the zero. And, and uh, the thing with that is we wanted from the start for the ghosts to be real. Mm -hmm. But I wanted the ghost to have transparency. So we devised a way of shooting the actors without many green, green, green screen pieces, have them there for the other actors as the ghost, and then in post uh, create the translucency. And, and they are really gorgeous looking ghosts. Yeah, you never make an ugly monster. <laughs> no, I think monsters need to be powerfully beautiful, you know? And these ghosts are no exception. And much like Devil's Backbone, uh, the movie tells you the living are scarier than the dead, in a way. And it's very hard to hate your monsters, even the ones we're not supposed to like. You still find yeah. ways of putting charm in them. Are we going to yeah. hate these ghosts, or are we going to fall in love with them? Uh, answering that would spoil the movie. Ah. But I think uh, it's, it's, it's really a good... Uh, the, the movie is about the journey of how you see ghosts, right. in a way, yeah. And where are you on Disney's Haunted Mansion? Haunted Mansion, we delivered the screenplay, and it's up to Disney to say that they want to do it, they don't. Uh, Dark Universe, for example, they love the screenplay, but they wanted to go at the same time that I'm shooting Pacific Rim 2. Mm. So I'm shooting Pacific Rim 2, and they'll find someone for Dark Universe, and you never, you, you never know what's going to happen. It's, you're not a mastermind in control of your own destiny. You're just a leaf in the wind. <laughs> Right, a leaf in the wind. A okay. large leaf. Are we doing firefly quotes now or serenity yes. quotes? <laughs> yes, I would like that. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time and thanks for speaking with us. I really appreciate it. Delighted.